Good evening, folks. This is part two of Sun Controls Climate, and we're focusing on climate cycles. There are two categories, and one of them, which is not the main focus of today, but which we'll discuss briefly, is described in our field literature review textbook, and now even in modern climate analysis. The latest reports from the International Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, went so far as to acknowledge a number of these modulation potentials, ENSO, which is El Nino and La Nina, Pacific Decadal Oscillation, Atlantic Oscillation, Hemispheric Annular Modes, and this is believed to be a decadal scale forcing, 10, 20, 30, and 40 year harmonics, as solar energy works the sea surface temperatures over the 11 year cycle via its influence over the Hadley cells and the Walker circulation. But this is what is already known, already acknowledged, even if not well integrated into the climate models. But today, we're going to focus on a much grander and longer term cycle, and to do so, we begin with the widespread statement you hear in the media that we're now having the most rapid and extreme warming on record. Approximately every 1,500 years, and until recently they didn't know why, there is a spike in the global temperatures, and while these are easily identified during the last ice age, the last 12,000 years is a bit more challenging story, but I'm going to add some stars to this chart to show where the cycles hit going from left to right, which is from back in time up to now, the magenta star is part of the rise up out of the ice age that was 10,500 years ago. 1,500 years later at 9,000 years ago is the purple star, and in this reconstruction, it looks small, but it is the official breach up out of the glacial period. 1,500 years later, which is 7,500 years ago, is the light blue star that represents the rise into one of the climate optima of the Holocene. The only star not to have a rise in temperature is 6,000 years ago, the green star, and the 6,000 year cycle events, which are four of the 1,500 year events, is a special one. We'll come back to that in a minute, but up from there, the next one spiked into the other climate optimum, and notable high points in temperature the last few thousand years represent the marks of the other stars. This chart is a long-term average run, and while it is adequate to mark the general patterns, it does miss the most extreme short-term events, which are those 1,500-year cycle events. And those 1,500-year cycle events of heating, with the exception of the fourth one, the 6,000-year event, is called the dansgaard oschger cycle, and it is an average of 3 to 5 degrees Celsius jump in temperatures over 40 years, but with extreme examples reaching up to 8 degrees in 40 years. Obviously, that's only a fourth the total time of what they call modern global warming, but it dwarfs modern global warming by 200 to 500 percent. So when you hear that modern warming is record level and out of control and without precedent, that is plainly false. So what about those things that happen every 6,000 years? For reasons, again, not understood until recently, there's also a 6,000 year cycle. It appears to hit the fourth 1,500 year cycle, and this one swings the earth the other way with ice loosening in the polar region, dramatic cold, hydroclimate changes in the tropical region, and major flooding. The most recent such example is not well recognized by the field, but it will be soon after this year's recent confirmations of the hydroclimate forcing sinking up with the greenest of the green Saharan epochs 6,000 years ago in what we like to call the NOAA event. In a major revelation this year, it was confirmed that the 1500 and the 6000 year cycles do sync up, which fortified the best existing hypothesis of that correlation, the sun. They call it the Heinrich Bond solar cycle, and this is not the best name. Bond events were thought to be the modern version of dansgaard oschger events, but they should just keep the same name. Either way, the idea is that the cyclic super flares on the sun cause these events on Earth, with the solar wind energy preferring the polar region, this energy beams down throughout the atmosphere and equatorward traveling waves, providing both direct forcing and indirect forcing through the global electric circuit. Hopefully we're remembering part one. Recommended reading on this topic comes from Harvard's Lingam and Loeb, including a look back at the major short-term changes of three to seven degrees in temperature during major solar outbursts like the Carrington event in 1859. That happened within days, another way you know that modern warming is not record anything. But back to the suspicion of solar forcing, the solar side of that cycle is filling in as well. There is a well-known millennial scale super flaring potential on the sun, but the 3000 and 6000 year cycles had been largely questioned until earlier this year. And with all the geophysical and heliophysical cycles of extreme nature being harmonics, 
one must guess that the sun's slightly smaller millennial cycle is probably about 1,500 years, although, of course, a 1,000-year cycle would work for the sun side. But with the dansgaard oeschger cycle being 1,500 years, it appears that's a good bet for the millennial solar cycle as well. And with the 6,000-year event being so powerful, it would be enough to loose that ice from the polar region, not just heat up the atmosphere of the world. And when you loose that ice, you trigger the heat transport shutdown and desalination of the oceans, and you cause the Heinrich event. It's almost a little too perfect. The way the cycles match up, and it is only with recent discoveries can we confirm that the Earth and Sun cycles are indeed synchronized in what they call the Heinrich Bond Solar Cycle. Should be the Heinrich Dansgaard Oeschger Solar Cycle, but I admit, doesn't quite have the same ring to it. When you consider the importance of these events to the major oscillations and patterns and ocean-driven abrupt climate events, it is quite clear that the sun is what controls nearly everything about the atmosphere that we use to build patterns, cycles, and models and predictions, and that the modern global warming, while real, is 100% absolutely not any kind of record anything. I'll see you in the morning for the daily update. Be safe, everyone.